In this tutorial, I would like to talk about error handling in Combine. I'm continuing to work on an earlier project. So if you haven't watched that tutorial, can, you can find the link in the description. In the tutorial that I linked, I'm showing how to use FlatMap and nested publishers. If you are not familiar with this, you definitely should watch it because this is going to help a lot in understanding error handling or handling errors properly with Combine. So in this tutorial, we're going to continue working on this little example. And the um, tools that we're going to use to handle errors is the flat map operator, the catch operator, replace error, retry, set failure type, and map error. In the example that we, that we started earlier, I have here a list of URLs that we are going to fetch the image from. And so far, what I used is a current value subject to create a nested publisher of a flat map to fetch the images for these URLs. And I used here, I need to change this back so you actually see a use case for one of these operators. I'm going to change this flat map to just a flat map with URL. So I'm commenting the one out with the buffer and flat map is with the types a little bit tricky. And especially if you use, if you want to use iOS 13, I'm going to shortly change my target again. Because this time, so I have some other problems in here, which is the way I cannot use it. But if I take out my catch operator here, this nested publisher stream, now you see there is an arrow coming up here and it says that we cannot, I have here a type mismatch of my failure types because my upstream has the failure type never and this flat map has the failure type URL error. So you can test this. If you have a problem with the types of flat map, you can define the publisher you want to return here. So I'm going to use a any publisher to return here UI images and a URL error. And then after my stream, I need to type erase this. So this is erase to any publisher. But you see now it's getting a little bit less of an information overflow, but it says here never and you all are not equivalent. So in order to match the failure type, you can use the set operator set failure type to URL error. So now I'm telling the, the system that the upstream here gets also this failure type of URL error. This is now complaining down here because I have a error in the stream. I just wanted to show you this in case you want to use your flat map. This is one common problem with flat map. So I'm going to uncomment this because I cannot use so I'm going to leave this in here. It's not really necessary and go back to my um, target of iOS 14. So now the next problem is here um, that it tells me I have not, if you have a failure type in your stream, you need to use here a different sync. So the easiest way, because it doesn't understand it, is to write the whole sync again. And in this case, you need to, you get the completion and my images. So I'm still going to do the same as before. I'm storing my images in my image array. Another use case for set failure type is if you want to merge or combine, use combined data or zip. Well, if you want to merge different data streams together and maybe one of them like here has a failure type of never and the other one has a URL session error, URL error. And if you want to merge them, you need to, before you can merge them, make sure that both of them have the same failure type. So for example, the one with never, you would again use set failure type too. This is more making sure that the types match, but what happens if I want to actually change or inject or work with my own error types? In case you want to do this, we can use map error. So for example, up here, I can use a map error. And I get the error from my upstream and I can uh, change this in a different error. So in order to make this a little bit more interesting, we're going to now create our own error type. 
and I probably should do this in a different file. It's also more fun if you want to do testing and inject and dependency injection. So this is a Swift file. This is my API resources. This is a struct API resources. I just want to store my error type somewhere else because like in this example, I use, I do multiple fetches. So I might need to use my own error type on multiple occasions. So I'm declaring my own error as an enum API error. This needs to conform to error. And you can also use here, if you make this custom string convertible, you can also define your own descriptions. So this is just an empty description right now because we haven't set up anything. So since I'm working with URL session, I probably have a U case which is URL. So this and the associated type is URL error. Then I have another case which is bad response because we haven't in we have the response but we didn't check this. This is a red response with the status code of int and then we're just going to use here a unknown error. If I want to use the map error function, I have a error that I need to conform to my own type. So it's good if I have here a function that creates me my own type from this is static function convert error. This is a error into my own API error. So I can call this in my data stream. So I'm going to check what is in this error, switch error in case this is a URL error, I'm going to return a URL error with this error as a URL error in case this is a API error. So if it's already one, then I'm going to return my error as my own type API error. And the default is to return it as an unknown error. Unknown error. So right now I already said we have here actually one error we didn't one error we didn't actually inject ourselves yet is the bad response. So let's do that first. In my data stream here, just after the URL session, I can st I still have the response, so I can investigate. So let's transform this. So when I use map, I get the data and the response. And I might want to throw an error when my response is bad. Otherwise, I'm going to just return the data. So if I need to check what is the response, if let response is a response as a HTTP response, HTTP URL response. And I want to make sure that the range is in between 200 and 299. So if this is not if my response is status code, and I need to comment this line out. So if my status code is not in this array, then I'm going to throw my own error. So this is throw my API resources error. And this is the bad response and the status code is the responses status code. Since I'm throwing here something, my own error, I cannot use map. I need to use try map. So now I have my own error type in there. It's complaining because my types don't match. So now you see, I have now two different types. I have here either the URL session error or my own. So I definitely should unify this and we are going to use here map error. So this is the error and I'm going to return here my own API resources, API error, converting this error. So this is now the error type I have here. Probably sh so my flat map here, instead of URL error, I'm going to return this one. And now it's complaining because he up here, this does not match anymore. So I also need to change this in the set failure type. And I now I forgot if uh, to actually return my main data. So if my response is fine, 
and f I can now return my data. So that was a lot of uh, types. So I'm just going to uh, clean out a couple of things. So you see, I have now here my own error type. So if you um, want to either change the type, you use set failure type, or if you want to convert your D types, it's map error. The other operators here help us to deal with these errors to get the error actually out. So you can retry this operation. For example, we could say here retry um, like two times, which means that if an error occurs, the whole upstream, so this is everything that is above retry until it is published, which is the UL session data task publisher, is recreated if there's an error two times. So in total, you can have maximum, this stream is maximum recreated three times. In case you still have an error, we need to get it out of the data stream, because if you don't do that, your whole stream, your subscriber here, does receive this error and will complete. So I can probably create here an error. So for example, I can mess up one of my URLs. So I'm changing the last one to just delete one of the letters. So I go in my tab, everything loads normally. And now if I want to load the last um, file, you see, I get here quite a bit of print statements. This is because I receive here an error saying I have a bad response. <laughs> but you might not say that's fine. Maybe one of them is in, has a problem. But if you try to load something else, nothing will happen. Because once you have an error in your stream, it's going to complete. And this means my data stream is not processing anything else anymore. So I need to get out my errors, my failure. I already had here as the previous example, the sketch operator. So if I do that again, in the catch, you see now I get my own error and it's expecting a return publisher. So you can, depending on what error you have now, especially since we have our own now, say, okay, if it's this bad response, maybe I should fetch something else. Or maybe I just use, I just going to, if it's really bad, maybe I, I abandon everything. So in this case, I'm just going to do the same as before. I'm going to use here an empty publisher, which basically means it's not going to publish anything. If I tap on the last one, it will still finish the data stream. We did catch this error, but our, our stream is still finishing. Instead of catching, you can also say I'm replacing an error with a new image. So let's say I have something in my bundle. This is just an example because we're not using it like this. In this case, it's more if your replace error is if it's really one value that you want to exchange it or you want to kick off a whole new data stream, some task to get something, then it's catch. So I tap here and now you see I did receive my error and it's replacing it with this value. But if I try to load something else, it's not responding anymore because once in my mainstream, here, this is part of my mainstream, going to the subscriber, as soon as there is an error in there, it's going to complete it. But that's why in this graphics, I have this red box of error handling inside the flat map because you have substreams in your flat map that you create them all the time and you, they complete all the time. They're only running one for one task and then they're done. So if this substream completes with an error, if there's an error occurring, occurring in the substream, my mainstream never sees anything, never completes. So if you handle errors, make sure that they are you know, the stream that you want to keep alive for longer should never see an error. And in order to achieve this, in this example, I have to simply take my replace error and place it inside of this flat map. So before my erase to any publisher, I'm here replacing my error. And then now it's going to complain because of my error types. So the results of this 
flat map inside my, my nest and stream is not my error type here, it's never. This is good because then I also don't need to do anything about setting my failure type above, so I also can uncomment this. And now everything is working again. If I run again, so my images appear and I click on the one that gives me a failure. I see my replacement image, I tap on something else and I can still load more images. So I didn't destroy my data stream. In, if you, so you can, in this case, I have here a placeholder, but you can also use catch if you don't want to see anything. And then it's just like nothing ever happened. Or you fetch something else, maybe a different URL. So you have with catch, you can be more flexible of, with catch, you do more, you can do more advanced things of replacing errors, checking which error you have, and then decide on which one you want. So here in this case, I could investigate my own error. So you have these five operators that you most of the time want to use. There is also assert no failure. So this is assert no failure. But this will um, basically ignore failures and it will crash your application if, there is, if one failure happens. So it's usually more for testing for development. One thing that you saw now, my publisher stream did become a little bit less Nice, because there's so much stuff going on here, especially here with my substream. If you have a look at it, the one that might be nice to be reusable is the part with URL session from URL, then managing my response and mapping my own error. This would be nice to have separately, because then I can use this for different data types, different whatever I want to fetch. So you can take this part out, so I'm just going to copy this. And in our API resources, I'm going to create another function. This is fetch from URL. So what I want to create in here is this publisher. So I'm going to return this here. And since I, this is going to be a messy type, I don't want to have, so I'm going to, since this is going to be a little bit messy, I prefer to use a type erase publisher. So I'm going to, I want to return a any publisher which means I have to actually use here import combine. So this is a publisher of type data. It's very general and it has my own error. To make this work, I need to type erase with erase to any publisher. So this is nice and reusable. So in my UI image fetcher, I need to have this API resource. So let API resource is this API resource. So when I want to fetch this, I'm not creating this every time here new. I'm going to ask my API resource to fetch this for this URL. So, dot. so now it looks a lot nicer. It's very clean because I get here my own arrow. I can use this for all different occasions and things got a lot shorter. <laughs> If you having this code now separately, this URL session also will help you with dependency injection and testing. So in the next part of the series, I'm going to just include a little bit more here. So you see the dependency injection and we will learn a new publisher, which is the results publisher. Give this video a like if this was useful until next time. Happy coding.